How's it going, everybody? I'm Josh, KI6NAZ. As part of the Ham Radio Crash Course podcast, we take feedback in the form of voicemails and emails. And we got a really interesting email from Joshua, who went into some detail talking about emergency situation and where a Baofeng-type radio was used to potentially save a life. So I'm going to bring Joshua right in, and we're going to get right into it. Joshua, thanks for taking a... Thanks for taking some of your time out of Father's Day to come talk with me about this and kind of give us some background. How you doing? I'm doing well. We talked a little bit about your, your background and, and maybe give people just a little preface of, of how this all went about, because I, I think it's kind of important to the story. Uh, yeah. So uh, I've been a, a firefighter paramedic for coming up on about 20 years. Uh, my wow. current role and position is a, a captain for a municipal fire department in the DFW Metroplex here in well, North Texas. Well, thank you for taking care of everybody, or at least trying to help out whenever there's these situations. But something kind of wild happened, or it was an emergency, right? And yeah. let's just go from there. Why don't, you, why don't you walk us through it? And I'll add some questions if I have them as we go. Yeah. So um, often in my role as a uh, fire captain, I find myself as the incident commander for structure fires, major medical events, uh, and car accidents. Um, and in our district, we use uh, contracted ambulances to transport our patients. The fire department doesn't have our own organic uh, ambulances. Mm. Um, and given the density of traffic that we have in the Metroplex, we also use a lot of helicopters to fly these patients out to the various medical facilities so they can get follow on care. Um, a few years back, I'm, a healthy amount of time has passed, so I can tell this story. My crew and I were dispatched out to a major accident on Interstate 20, major three lane, both direction highway system that cuts right through DFW. Okay. Uh, it has a speed limit of about 70 miles an hour, but if it's Texas, you're getting passed if you're doing the speed limit. 70 is just a recommendation. <laughs> just a suggestion. <laughs> just a suggestion. Yeah. So these car accidents are usually pretty gnarly when they do, uh, we do uh, show up to them. So this uh, particular one had uh, four cars. That were involved one in particular still had a critical patient still pinned in the car mm. we closed the highway my crews go to work we had to get out the jaws of life spreaders cutters to start removing the car away from the patient um, and i called for a helicopter uh, just because this patient is is unstable uh, it was easily identifiable that this patient had multiple long bone fractures a head injury internal oh, bleeding wow. this patient was yeah bad um, off, real bad off. this patient was losing yeah, losing consciousness, uh, poor skin perfusion, like they're pale and ashen. Mm. Um, in in our world, we, it's a sick patient. Just down low, it's just a sick patient. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you really quick, our when, dispatch, you, when you call it in, like, is that over radio? Is that phone for helicopter? How does that work? We call it in over radio. So we have a shared municipal dispatching system that is, and this is important note, that is all on 700, 800 megahertz system. Uh and it covers a huge portion of multiple cities and counties getting on dispatch and just requesting a, a helicopter is literally as easy as me keying up the mic and saying, I need a helicopter. Okay. That's it. Okay. It's, okay. <laughs> they don't ask questions. They know that I'm there and okay, let's so get it's, him what it's he coordinated. You, you, you got your band plans. You got the radios. You got the people that can reach out and do what they got to do to get the helicopter to you. So that's all late. That works perfectly, right? It works perfectly. Yeah. When we can coordinate with our primary helicopter agency, because the Metroplex is just so large landmass, mm -hmm. there's actually two, three major helicopter agencies that we can work with. Okay. And on this particular day, our primary helicopter agency that we would use, okay, they weren't available. So our dispatch uh, has to go and physically landline phone call for another <sighs> helicopter service to come in and it's not via radio on on that end so that's uh, while a, we're working you trying radioed to get this, in uh, and you're like hey i need a, a helicopter and then they had to go to a phone or you know switch lines or whatever they do to this secondary or third party you're not you're not your primary helicopter provider service right so okay okay got yes. it all right yes they give us they give me notification that the helicopter is about 15 minutes out so we have some time to start working and as we're cutting, uh, we get the patient out of the vehicle, and of course, the patient stops breathing. Oh no! And now this is this is when you're as a paramedic, you're like, okay, this is job town. We need to get to work. This is exactly what we train for. We have all the equipment. Let's let's do this. 
um, while they're doing that, I'm the incident commander and I start trying to set up a landing zone, large hundred foot by hundred foot square area. And the only clearing was really between two large overpasses. So we're kind of shooting between, oh, wow. uh, between about a three to six, three to 400 foot gap in between two overpasses. I'm going to set, try and set the helicopter in between those two overpasses because we're on the lowest part of the highway. Uh, the crew, uh, got the patient to the ground, started controlling the bleeding, started ventilating the patient. They placed a breathing tube, started an IV because uh, we know that the helicopter service is going to have blood products. And really that's what this patient needs is whole blood. Right. Dispatch calls us back on, on our 700, 800 megahertz radio and says the helicopter is a few minutes out and they're requesting our operating frequency. Uh oh. Well, you know, our <laughs> operating frequency. We're on it. It's the 700, 800 megahertz channel. And dispatch said that the helicopter didn't have that <laughs> radio frequency uh, programmed into their banks. They had no way to contact us. Oh, wow. They referred, because we work with so many municipal agencies, uh, we often refer back to the NIFOG, um, the Field Operations Guide, the National Incident Field Operations Guide, which I don't even have a physical copy. <laughs> I've got of. one. Yeah, it's right that's, here. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. We have the digital copies and, sure. and it's program it's programmed into all of our radio. Mm -hmm. But when if if you're familiar with VTAC, VTAC is VHF. Mm. And VTAC stands we for don't, what? Is that vehicular tactical or what is that? No, no, it's just VHF tactical channel. Oh, so that's okay. Yeah, VHF tactical channel. Mm -hmm. And this is where the problem insert incurs mm -hmm. is our radios on the ground at scene are we don't have vhf we we're are on an eight yep we're all on a 700 800 systems and our radios are not multi-band mm -hmm. and if we don't have ground to air communication the helicopter will not land that's a standard operating procedure if we don't have air to ground communication they're not going to land right i have a patient critical bleeding not breathing yeah who needs to get to a trauma center immediately and i start hearing the helicopter in the distance <laughs> what are we supposed to do? what do you do we got some flares we're gonna start waving flares no we have to have voice yeah. communication yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's of course that's, a, that's for the safety of the the air crew sure and people on the ground if the helicopter hits something or you know tags one of those uh overpasses right you could easily yeah. be in a, you could easily be in a two emergency situation yeah and that would be really bad and that's a lot of paperwork i mm. just don't want to fill out <laughs> That's <laughs> sure. Of course. Of course. So uh, the ambulance supervisor or the ambulance that was there, the ground ambulance had a supervisor. And I asked if, if, Hey man, you got a VHF programmed radio. And to my surprise, he did. And he went back to his ambulance and he, he grabbed a Baofeng UV5R. <laughs> Baofeng to the rescue. Baofeng to the rescue. And this and guy, he had it all programmed. Was it, was it fully? Yep. He wow. had all the V he had all of the VTAC. VHF and UHF channels programmed into his his Baofeng. Mm -hmm. And with that $18 Baofeng, I was able to get voice to voice communication with a helicopter and land that helicopter. Wow. Um, did anything come out of this? Like back at your station or, or where you you organized with your with your group? Did did you perhaps bring on a VHF radio like your incident commander or your whomever at a higher rank has a multi-function radio any any changes like that yeah so immediately after the call i submitted reports on bow thanks for everybody bow thanks for everybody <laughs> no we're not going to put bow thanks for everybody um we submitted our reports and we since retooled our pace plans which you've talked about many yeah. times in the channel and in the pace plans we now worked out a standing uh, a standard communications plan with all air to ground and ground to ground transports where on the dispatchers and they can patch us through. So on the dispatching side, they can switch over from a 700, 800 system. So it's like cross band. Through. You're cross, cross band. band. Yeah. Okay. Yep. They're able to work cross band so we can get to those, those VTAC and UTAC, which is the UHF channels. Uh, so we have a way to talk to them. That's, that's pretty smart. If you have a pretty robust radio on your person anyway, why not just dispatch, let them handle it? But then, of course, you know, pace plan, right? There's a, those are redundant systems usually. Have you, I guess if you all got radios on you, then you're really less likely that you're going to run out of radios because you're all carrying them, right? 
Yeah, we all uh, in our agency, we all have the big Motorola APX 6000, 7000s. Don't quote me on that. I'm not That's a the Motorola yellow one, guy. Because right? you're. Yes. Yeah. 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 The big brick ones that are safe to go in hazardous environments and fires and whatnot. Yeah. Ours, ours particularly were just 700, 800 megahertz band. And mm. there's there's NIFOG channels for the 7800 system that are already programmed into our radio. But if we're working with third-party contract ambulance service or air ambulance services, they have to be able to talk to kind of everybody. Yeah. And given the 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 land mass that they cover in the helicopters, huge, huge uh radiuses for those helicopter responding mm -hmm. districts, they they need they use VTAC and UTAC predominantly. So with that change, now we try and do our communications through dispatch which is our giant repeater. Yeah, that, that makes sense too. Cause then you have people that's their, that's their entire job. Instead of you trying to yes. route the plumbing together of which cross band unit you got to go through, let the people whose job it is handle that. I, yes. so really interesting story. I, I guess the important question, did the person make it? Yes. Yeah, oh, patient, good. <laughs> yeah. Patient had a good outcome. The patient, uh, the helicopter landed safely. The patient mm -hmm. was loaded. We uh, we got blood started on Good. scene, which is yeah. a, a critical intervention for us. The yeah. patient's vitals improved dramatically. We had to continue to ventilate them, but the patient had a good outcome, which in the fire EMS world, that's one of our constant complaints is we never really know how the patient did after they left the scene. Yeah. And on that particular one, that same ambulance supervisor who had the Balfang in the ambulance he was able to tell us, he's like, hey, patient did well. He got to a trauma team. He ended up spending a, a good deal of time in the, the trauma ICU, sure. but was dis discharged later. I was going to say with multiple, you said multiple long bone fractures, head injury, bleeding. That's, yes. a, that's a, a heavy bill of, <laughs> of services that are going to get applied to that person. Yeah. In particular, that, that car ended up getting... Uh, it hit a, a vehicle in front of it. It mm -hmm. spun sideways and then it got T-boned on the passenger side. And yeah, pretty uh, in, in our work, in our line field, we, we call like uh, occupant intrusion. So the occupant compartment of the vehicle, when there's more than 12 inches of intrusion or more like the vehicle is squished into yeah. that patient compartment, more than 12 inches, it's considered like a high mechanism of injury, which can lead to lots of physical trauma. And on that one, I was ballparking about 18 inches. So wow. the B the B post, which is where your seatbelt is normally connected, mm -hmm. was pushed in about 18 inches on that that side of the patient's uh, vehicle. Wow. They're incredibly lucky. Well, yeah. Yeah. I, I appreciate you sending the email, Joshua. When I read that with uh, my wife, Leia, on the podcast, we were both kind of like, wow, this is crazy. And then you get to the, the, the hook of the story. We, whipped out the bow fag and, and made the bow call. Fang. It, it's so crazy to me that, um, that yeah, these, these pace plan discussions kind of are like an evolving thing, but this act, this just ability to get this $18 radio as a backup to a backup to a backup. They're almost everywhere. You see them everywhere now. So I imagine that even though you guys have all gone to one standard, there's probably always going to be some guy, a, a paramedic or a, not a paramedic, but like, you know, someone that's in the ambulance or someone that's on the, there's going to be somebody, there's going to be a Baofeng somewhere. They're everywhere. <laughs> yeah. And since then I've, uh, I've started daily carrying at work. It's, it's in one of my bags in the fire engine. I've started carrying my, my D74. That's my, oh, nice. my, my everyday carry. And yeah, you be you be betting sure that there is a there's the NIFOG channels All thrown in up. one of the banks. <laughs> I was going to ask you what's your what's your favorite radio right now as an amateur? Uh, what is it? Is it the D seventy four? D seventy four, yeah, daily carry. I have a fifty one hundred in my my personal vehicle. Nice. Uh, right now, I'm floating between a, a nine eighty one and a seventy three hundred. Oh, cool. Um, I don't do a whole lot of talking, so yeah. there's not a lot of, not a lot of contacts in the log, but I do a lot of listening. Good. Well, you know, that's how I started as well. And I still do a lot of listening. So there's nothing wrong with that. Just having fun with radio is what's important. Joshua, this is a, a, another eye-opening story from someone that, that dealt with it on the ground, working the Baofeng to pull in the helicopter. So, so thanks for taking the time out of your Father's Day to chat with us. You're quite welcome. All right. Thank you. 
So thank you, Joshua, for sharing your story. I think it's telling that in a world with so much radio around us in the form of, you know, one entity uses this frequency set, another entity uses this frequency set, that you almost get this chaos that sometimes happens. And it's really funny how the some of the links we go to to be able to to bridge that gap and sometimes the Baofeng just happens to be there ready and willing to make that contact so again as always it's not the best radio it's maybe the best radio for $18 but it definitely works on VHF UHF and it works well enough to bring in an emergency helicopter to get a very sick individual the trauma care that they needed so again thank you Joshua thanks everybody that emails us on the podcast if you'd like to check out the podcast I have links in the video description so you can listen to I am Josh KI6NAZ73.